Gillespie, and it's Monday, April 7th, 6th, <laughs> uh, and today is um, our broadcast, our regular broadcast, um, and let's start with a moment of silence. Before we hear from our presenters today, I just want to thank John Lees. John is our resident volunteer and the executive producer of these broadcasts. So, John, thank you, thank you very much for your ongoing support. Um, we've been having some technical difficulties with broadcasting or recording these broadcasts. So, um, we have a YouTube channel for Collington and today we're going to be recording on our YouTube channel and the link for that YouTube recording will be included in the written update that we always send to you via email. And that'll be on the re resident website as well. So on Friday, um, when we talked, we talked about our movement or uh, moving to a hard closure at Collington and letting you know that as of midnight tomorrow night, we will um, request that all residents stay on campus, and if you need to leave, that you um, get permission from me directly. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Justin Reeves, our CFO, to talk about um, IT, and then we'll be hearing from Christian, and then Megan, uh, Danina, and then we'll come back to Megan, if you do have a question um, about anything that we're covering with you today, you can shoot Karen uh, Cheney an email, and we'll have some Q&A at the very end. Okay, and with that, I'll turn it over to Justin. Thank you, Ann. As Ann said, my name is Justin Reeves. I'm the Chief Financial Officer here at Collington. And good evening. So during this pandemic, we've been trying to um, limit the interactions and reduce the risk um, between residents and employees. So in saying that, um, the IT members are uh, no exception. So we're trying to limit their interaction with residents um, by troubleshooting any issues you may have via phone first. If the issue is not resolved, the team will try to decide um, whether to enter the residence or not based on competing priorities or issues. Working landlines are our first priority. We want to ensure that everyone has access to dial up to 911, call security, or call someone else here at Collington in case of an emergency. If we are unable to fix this, these issues internally, we will continue to reach out to our vendors to see if they can help us troubleshoot. But at the same time, we know with the closing of our community, community with not allowing visitors or vendors onto the community, vendors like Comcast and others have also not, they, they are also not sending out their technicians. So we're gonna try our best to troubleshoot these items from afar and if possible or if necessary, have our IT personnel enter the residence of a resident, but um, please bear with us as we, we work through some of these. We're putting out some communication um, in your daily communication regarding what to do if some issues occur. So we specifically detail landline phones, televisions via or Comcast, internet Wi-Fi, individual computers, tablets and cell phones, and Sarah Pendens. So initially, always call the help desk first. From your cell phone, please call number 301-925-9610. If you're having a landline issue, please utilize your cell phone to call this number. You can access or put in uh, a work order via works of via link that we're putting out in our documentation as well as calling um, the wonderful Miss Lula Jones at 2151. 
If you have any questions, please feel free to contact myself, Brian Stanton, or Khalil Braswell. Thank you. Chief Operating Officer and wanted to give you some updates on some of the operational items that are occurring. So we continue again to have no visitors um, in the shutdown. We also are uh, allowing private duty aides on campus and they are going through our security check-in. At our security check-in procedures, our employees, our private duty aides, and if there's an emergency where we need to bring a uh, vendor on for let's say life safety reasons they are coming on campus they are then being screened they're washing their hands and having their temperature checked actively um, and again those series of questions include if they've traveled internationally outside the Maryland region and if that's occurred they're not permitted access onto the campus we've also worked with a lot of residents to continue to make sure that those who need to self-isolate perhaps they've returned from trips, um, have the equipment and supplies needed to be able to do so. Um, it is always a pleasure for me to be able to stand here in front of you and say that, again, to date, we have no COVID positive individuals on campus. Uh, we're working very hard behind the scenes to keep it that way. Uh, I would, again, like to reiterate that we need everyone to do their part. Um, it's not about just protecting yourself, but about protecting your others, your fellow residents, your fellow team members, um, we're all in this together. So one of the things that uh, we have gone to is some changes for Metro. Um, we're gonna have uh, Danina Trotman, who is our supervisor for security, come up and give some information around changes to Metro uh, and changes to security and how we're gonna be delivering newspapers. Um, as you heard mentioned, one of the things that will be new is the security pass. Um, and the way that will occur is you will email Karen Cheney, um, request the security pass. Um, the list and the pass will then be generated through our security team. And then you'll also receive a call when you return back to verify that that pass has discontinued. Um, and with that, I'm gonna let Danina do some talking about the security and transportation changes. Thank you, Megan. Good afternoon, everyone. As Megan said, this is Danina Trotman, the security supervisor. Just giving a few updates on how things have changed at security. Um, we're gonna be having the drivers now to deliver the newspapers Monday through Friday. Um, we're hoping to get those newspapers to you all by 9 a.m. Um, on the weekends, we'll have the 11 to 7 security team to deliver them um, within their rounds and roving. So if you could just please bear with us um, as we get those to you. Also, um, starting on Wednesday morning, um, as Megan said, that there will be um, a change in the, um, I'm sorry, the um, shuttle runs. We used to have shuttle runs every hour on the hour. So we're trying to eliminate um, so many shuttle runs. So we're asking staff, if please, to uh, sign up to sign up for the week so that we'll know and have an idea of who's actually needing a ride back and forth to work. Um, that would be helpful for the, for the drivers as well. Also, packages. As you all know, we receive a slew of packages. <laughs> Vern, Tiffany, maintenance, security, we all are helping out to make sure that the package um, delivery um, goes, goes well. Um, today was one of a, cha a challenging day, so um, kind of work with us. I know we're still trying to work with um, Vern in her new location. Um, as I receive updates, um, I'll give updates to you all. Uh, anything else, let's see. That's going to do it. Oh, as far as far as packages, um, we are still receiving packages from families um, that you will be receiving from us. Please, again, let families know to um, if they can, just for the safety of you all, if they're bringing in packages, 
people are doing really good with wiping down things that come from the stores, the grocery stores. So if you would have your families to wipe down and repackage them into nice clean bags, that'll help with us as well. Thank you. Thanks, Danina. So one of the questions I got was, if families still want to make deliveries for groceries, how do they get that on campus? So the best way to do that is to have your loved one to come to the campus entrance. They will radio into security. Security will direct them to the security circle, and then a team member will get those supplies from them, and then one of our Collington team members will deliver that supplies to you. Um, also wanted to talk about some changes that occurred over the weekend and what we call personal protective equipment. Uh, many of you have heard me talk about personal protective equipment, commonly referred to as PPE, and that continues to change every day. Uh, we're having regular calls with Maryland Department of Health. Uh, we get updates from the governor's office, and we have other updates through the Department of Epidemiology through Maryland. So on Saturday, we made changes for all of the health center team members to go to wearing masks. On Sunday, we got more information from the office of the governor that our health center team members will now don what we call full personal protective equipment. Regardless of whether we were to have a COVID positive resident or not, they will now don this per personal protective equipment. What that looks like is a gown, gloves, mask and a face shield. So they'll be wearing that every time because they have direct contact with residents. It's for their protection and also for the protection of other residents. I and mean, then it's our way again to help prevent the spread and the ability to have COVID. For other employees and team members on campus, you may see them that they're now donning a cloth mask. And thank you to so many of you that continue to make the cloth masks. Uh, we desperately need them. Uh, so please continue to make them. We're gonna be putting some links on our website of how you can make the masks, and you can drop those off. You can either email me directly, um, or you can drop those off at the security desk or at the clock tower um, so that we can then get them. So every employee who doesn't have direct contact with a resident, so that could look like a facilities team member who enters into a cottage because maybe they're fixing a clogged toilet, or maybe that looks like a member of our security team that's walking the hallways, or perhaps that looks like one of our culinary team members who's delivering the meals. They will now be wearing a cloth mask. Again, this is only for, to protect others. So you get about 5% protection from a cloth mask, but the biggest importance is that it protects you when I am wearing the mask. Um, so as we're all in this together, this will help again to prevent any spread of germs and infections. As your mask gets wet or gets soiled, we are asking team members to please wash, wash them every day. Um, you can take them home to wash them so that in the mornings when you arrive on campus, you can put them on in the parking lot as you're walking in because it is now recommended that you wear a mask in public places. Again, for our IL residents, we continue to ask to please send masks in. We can then get them to you if you need them, um, but we will also have videos of how you can create a mask with even common household items. As long as you have a bandana or a scarf um, and even a hair tie or a rubber band, you can make a mask. And we'll have those links up on our website for tutorials so you can learn how to do that. And again, Please continue to make the masks and reach out, and if you need one, we'll be sure to try to get our best to get one to you quickly. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Christian Ramsey to talk a little bit about culinary, some changes for the country store, and how you can get groceries when needed. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Christian Ramsey, Director of Culinary Services. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is, uh, I, I heard from a few residents. They were calling some of the wrong numbers when trying to get in contact with the culinary department. Please do not call 2134 or 2135. Those are the dining room numbers. Please just call me directly at 4772 if you have any questions, concerns, uh, in, in regards to your meal service. So please call 4772, not 
2135 or 2134, please. Okay, the country store. So operations in the country store will continue at this time. We're not closing the country store. Please don't be uh, alarmed about that. The country store will stay open. Uh, the first thing I want to do is say thank you to all the resident volunteers in the country store for providing such an invaluable service to your own neighbors. It's, it's, it's wonderful, and I'm glad to have uh, so many volunteers in the country store helping. Thank you, Ann Colson, especially for structuring the country store in a way that keeps uh, all the volunteers at a social, dis uh, social distance recommendation. So Ann has constructed that in a, in a wonderful way. Thank you, Ann. Uh, let's see here. I just want to remind residents, I, I had a few phone calls with residents concerned that they can't go to the grocery stores to get specific items they prefer. I want to say, as you heard Megan say and Ann say, if you want to get the hall pass to go to the uh, local grocery store to get these very specific items, I suggest you follow the proper guidelines listed by Ann and Megan so that you are able to go to the grocery store and get these very specific items. However, I want to say that for those residents who, who are curious, we want to ask, or I want to ask, if possible, please call me at 4772 or email me. Do you have any possible suggestions of items that you may want to see in the country store during this time, or, or produce, dairy, what have you? Let me know, and we're going to see what we can do to, to find and stock these items in the country store for a limited amount of time during this. Now, I cannot guarantee I'm going to find every item that's desired, but we can we will accommodate when we can. So please contact me at 472, 4772 or email me. I get a lot of questions about can we, can we sell wine in the country store? More information about that. I need to work on that a little bit more. Uh, this, there are some uh, licensing issues that I need to talk about. but. More information to come on selling wine out of the country store. Just a, rem a reminder to staff, I mean, excuse me, a reminder to residents that staff will be wearing gloves and masks when they're delivering your meals, and that staff should not be handing you meals hand to hand. They should be placing those meals down, either in front of your door or on a chair or something that's near the, your, your entrance of your, your cottage or apartment. Okay? And then once they walk away, residents, you should then come out and then uh, retrieve your meals. We should not be ha doing hand-to-hand -hand, uh, Passover of the meals. And that's all I have for today. I'm going to turn it back over to Ann. We've finished our presentations. Um, now it's time for Q&A. I just have a couple of more comments before we wrap up. But why don't we have the question, and it's for Megan. Karen? In the neighborhood, Megan. people have been talking about the restrictions for Creighton Center residents. Some are saying they are not allowed to even step outside their rooms. Is this correct? If so, how are they managing socialization so vital to those in the Creighton Center? Then there's a second part. <laughs> so the question was around how are residents in the Creighton Center getting socialization? Um, so it looks a little different for every neighborhood. So for many neighborhoods, it might look like the individuals staying in their room and it may look like one of our team members, one of our activity team members coming in to provide some different games, some different abilities for that, um, or excuse me, supplies, so they have the ability to participate in some different items, some different TV programs that you're seeing on 972. Our team is also seeing on 972. For our fitness team members, some of them are going in and providing one-on-one -on -one fitness for those residents that need that additional fitness. And then for our Arbor neighborhood, which is memory care, a lot of that looks like us doing some social distancing still around those residents to support them, especially during this time. Uh, we recognize that with the memory care challenges that come with that, that we want to be able to be um, as, as least restrictive as possible um, and to really try to help them to understand what's going on to the ability they can, but also to provide them 
um, an ability to not be bored, to not feel isolated. Um, and one of the other things we're doing is taking them out into uh, the Arbor Garden as much as possible. Um, and then lastly, um, if you have uh, friends that are in the Creighton Center, a lot of them are reaching out via phone. It's, we found it's a great time. Um, people are reconnecting with old friends, with family members. Many of them are doing FaceTime. Um, and then there is also um, uh, a, lot of, a lot of fun that is going in the Creighton Center. Um, it is uh, definitely a, a challenge to try to find ways to entertain people in their room. Um, but it's uh, been interesting to learn a lot about what people like, what they want, whether that might be reading books, some of them might be writing some memoirs, um, and so we're really trying to be as one-on-one -on -one and unique with each resident as possible. Okay. Um, there was a second part to address that, but I do have one more question for Megan. Is it the case that EMTs responding to 911 calls do not have to pause to go through the security check. So EMTs that are that are responding to 911 calls for the security check, I'm going to assume that that means coming in and getting their temperatures taken, and that would be correct. They do not have to come into campus. They go directly uh, responding to where they need to be. Um, most of the EMTs now, um, if not all, are donning a full uh, PPE gear. Um, it was that they were calling and would ask a series of questions to find out if it could possibly some, be someone who is uh, a COVID positive or a person under investigation for symptoms. And now almost all of the ambulances have gone to, I believe, just fully donning that PPE. Again, that personal protective equipment, just in case they get there and find out that it is somebody who uh, is suspected of uh, COVID. One quick question for Deneen. Okay. Is there no way for an earlier than 11 to 7 security shift to deliver newspapers before 11 a.m.? Okay, so let's just get clarity. Um, 11 to 7 is during the time that the newspapers are delivered. They're delivered here around 4 o'clock a.m. So once they're delivered, I was just trying to give a stretch time since it's a change where the actual Washington Post person was actually bringing it to your door. So we will try to get that out before 9 a.m. daily. Yeah, I'm sorry. Thanks, Megan. It's the actual 11 to 7 shift that's actually doing the delivery on the weekends. The drivers will be delivering the um, newspapers Monday through Friday. And the shift is 11 p.m. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, the shift is 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. You got it. All right. Any other? Okay, so that, uh, we, that's it for the Q&A. Karen says that we don't have any more questions coming in live. Um, I just wanna say thank you to the team. Uh, this has been a very challenging uh, past few days. Um, and everybody has really pitched in. It's been challenging in many ways, but I think that we are coming up with great solutions it's gonna require everybody's patience um, and understanding and compassion. As of today, there are 89 of the 130 nursing homes in Maryland with COVID-19 cases. And I'm not saying this to scare anybody, but I am saying it to emphasize the seriousness with which we must work together during what the governor is saying is the surge for Maryland. So it's going to be the next couple of weeks when we really have to button down everything that we're doing every day and make sure that we are adhering to all of the essential, critical approaches that we need to take. That includes six feet apart, washing your hands, not touching your face, 
coughing into your sleeve. And I think most importantly, maybe during this next uh, few, two weeks or so, we need to be caring and understanding with each other. So if you know a neighbor who needs help, um, give them a call or give one of our team members a call. Because now more than ever, we have to remember our mission around community and caring for each other. So with that, we're gonna sign off for today. Um, just remember that the link for the YouTube uh, recording of this broadcast will be included in the hard copies that will go to you and the email um, that will go to you as well. Thank you, have a great evening.